Hello, welcome to the January 2021 Let's Talk series. My name is Julia Bannister and I am a certified Irish dance teacher of the Social Irish Dance located here in New Brunswick, Canada. And I'm also a clinical social worker and a certified diabetes educator. The January 2021 series is actually going to focus on mental health. And I think it's a very appropriate topic, especially since we are ending our first wave of a pandemic and entering into the second wave. And because the second wave is kicking off with a much more virulent strain of the virus, and it not only has wrecked havoc, the virus itself, right across the world, uh, but that more virulent form is leaving people very, very nervous. And uh, we have yet to have the vaccine. So it is coming and thousands of people in many countries have now had it, but we are just beginning the vaccinations. So we have a long way to go yet. And this is an issue when it comes to individual and collective mental health and well-being. And we could talk about stress and anxiety and depression today, and perhaps we will. You'll take the conversations where you want and need it to go. But I thought that I would introduce the topic of resiliency. It's a part of our mental health and our mental wellness, and it's a less talked about concept and, and a very difficult one to grasp at times. But um, it is an important one. And the reason why is because when we went through the first wave of the pandemic, none of us had any experience with it. We didn't know what we were getting into. We didn't know what type of stress we would experience or how much perseverance it would take for us to get through it. But we have come through it or we would not be here having this chat today. And our thoughts and our prayers go out to families who have lost someone, and our gratitude uh, should be extended to each and every one of us um, just for being here today. And it is, it is quite something. So we are blessed, but we have a long way to go. And resiliency is something that will help us along the way. So resilience is it comes from the Latin word, and it means to rebound or to recoil. The term resiliency, the definition of it, it uh, people often think about the ability to bounce back from adversity, stress, crisis, trauma. Uh, but more subtly, it actually means to adapt and to adapt well from adversity with that ability to perhaps bounce back to homeostasis or to a former state of being. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I get a cold or I have a dance injury, I rarely bounce back to exactly my former dance injury self um, or my former cold self. It takes a lot of time to rebuild muscle or to rebuild my stamina, my cardio if I've had a cold or pneumonia. Um, so I prefer the term to adapt and to adapt well when talking about the term uh, resiliency. But whether you think of it as adapting, adapting well or bouncing back, what we do know is that it is something that is within all of us to varying degrees and we can improve or enhance our resiliency. Can we teach resiliency? Well, the military teaches resiliency to its personnel, but it is a very hard concept to teach. It is probably better taught in academia uh, to scientists and clinicians and professors, but we can definitely learn and we can learn to improve our resiliency because it is actually a socially learned uh, concept. And to help us with the conversation, perhaps, one way to think about it is we might say we have five pillars for resiliency and four key areas where resiliency could be and should be uh, covered. So the, the pillars of resiliency are actually 
uh, they're things that we actually know, such as self-awareness and mindfulness, self-care, positive relationships, and purpose. Those are five pillars of resiliency. And what we say is we all have our strengths. So for example, I'm really good at self-care and I'm fairly good at self-awareness being a clinician. Um, I'm not so good at mindfulness. I know pe lots of people that are better at mindfulness than I am. And I am definitely good when it comes to purpose, to set goals and to have a vision and go towards that. That is a strength that I have. But what we actually say with resiliency, if we want to improve our resiliency, is we should be working on all key areas or all pillars. Now that doesn't mean that you work on them all at the same time, but you celebrate your strengths and draw from them. So my ability for self-care, I would draw on that. And then we work purposely uh, on the areas maybe that we don't have as much strength in. So again, one of my areas would be mindfulness. And it's something that I could actually put some energy into, and it's going to help me overall have a more balanced approach to my resiliency, and that's my ability to adapt well to adversity or to bounce back. And then there are the four areas of resiliency, and those are psychological resiliency. So many of us are familiar with that either because of movies or because we know somebody who's in the military and we've seen uh, the challenges of the psychological toll that working in war or peacekeeping missions actually has on people. But that's one area of resiliency where we can see people adapting and well and bouncing back. Or another area is emotional resiliency. It's a less favored one for many people. Um, North Americans are not that comfortable talking about their emotions. But when we look at that area, it's the focusing on the ability to recognize our emotions, name our emotions, uh, express our emotions without them carrying us away or flooding us, and perhaps accepting ambivalence. So contrasting emotions such as today, I was happy to be out walking in the snow with my son, but I was sad that I was passing people and saying hello and everybody was masked so we really couldn't see their beautiful smiles. So accepting the ambivalence. And there's physical resiliency. We as dancers know all about that. And that is the ability to adapt and to adapt well to the challenges of learning a new dance perhaps. Learning a dance when possibly we don't have the strength of certain muscles where we ha are recovering from an injury and we're still trying to learn a dance. That would be me. Um, or perhaps we have asthma or arthritis. And so the ability to adapt and to adapt well with those limitations and to draw on our strengths um, so that we can consistently rebound is wonderful. And I think dance is a great analogy for that. If we think about our troubles or our batters, somebody who batters beautifully has a very rhythmic sound. They place their foot in the same spot all the time and they have the enunciation of the accent where it should be and the lighter sound where it should be. Um, I think it's a beautiful analogy for the physical resiliency. And then there is community resiliency. And community could be your family, your friends, your neighborhood, your city, your town, it could be your school, your workplace, but the ability for collectively bouncing back or adapting and adapting well to adversity, to trauma, to illness. That's kind of the five pillars and the four areas of resiliency. Before we go into our conversation, I want to add that we talk about two types of minds when it comes to resiliency. There's the fixed mind and the growth mind. 
The fixed mind is somebody who holds tight in fear, dwells on the past, perhaps looks at the negative of things, isn't willing to try too many new or different things for fear, fear of failure, fear of difficulty or the unknown. A growth mind person is somebody who looks back just enough to inform them about what they need to do to look forward, to plan, set goals, landmarks, and move forward. And move forward with an improved state of wellness or an improved state of dance, an advancement from where they were to where they want to be. Let's talk. Let's talk mental health. And let's not forget our resiliency. We all have it within us. We can all improve our resiliency. And we can help one another improve our resiliency. Through the second wave of the pandemic. And definitely through dance. Let's talk.